Welcome to episode 905 of I Am Talk, your weekly fix in all things Iron Man. Radio team, welcome along to episode 905 of Iron Talk with Coach John Newsom and Bevan James Oz. How you going, mate? Good. Kia ora, Bevan. Last episode of the year. Kia ora, uh, We've got to keep Toreo going because the stupid National Party trying to get rid of it. Far out. Morons. <laughs> Good way to start the show. Bit of New Zealand politics bashing. <laughs> but at least you'll have them bringing back smoking. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, reopening up mining and stuff and not getting rid of fossil fuels. Go the National Party. <laughs> Great work. Uh, they, they, they say don't talk politics, religion, or sex. Yeah, well, you started strong. Then. Yeah, it's not okay. Yeah, <laughs> but international listeners, we've we've, we've got, gone to a right leaning government again. National is kind of mid right, but they've got two parties to the right of them, and they've kind of had to succumb a little bit. <sighs> Far out. But one of the policies, and this seems, and, and I'm sure even this, you know, the national party supporters don't understand this one. New Zealand had a goal of being smoke free by 2025. Now it wasn't totally smoke free. I think it was less than five percent, mm. but there were some certain laws, and they were doing really well. Mm. And now comes here, bugger that, because they wanted the billion dollars of tax that they're going to get from the smokers. Absolute cocksuckers, <laughs> like. Just <laughs> morons. And you're traditionally a right-leaning person, aren't you? Yeah, no, I am <laughs> so annoyed. That and them getting rid of trade. It's just boomer politics. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we should move on. I wanted to start on a positive note. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I talk as proudly brought to you by. Uh, our awesome patrons you and how positive about them. Yeah. Damien, the $100 Bill Bennett. Jeff, the Explosion Curry. And Alan, Iron Palm. Kept his chain. Okay, then in this week's show, we've got some music politics. <laughs> John. Yeah, politics <laughs> corner, new section. <laughs> with John. Uh, discussion of the week, we're going to interview. We have. We're going to talk with uh, Gordo Burns. So for you guys who have been listening for ages, you'll know Gordo. Those of you who are new listeners, we'll do a bit of an intro, but a uh, very knowledgeable man. Yep, and he's a guy, he loves to geek out on Gordo, doesn't he? He does. He goes like, there's layers. Gordo goes a thousand layers low. Exactly. That's what he does. Uh, Coach's Corner. We haven't got a website. Uh, we've got an edge of the week. Oh, yep. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm on the iPad here, today. Oh, I can't do anything. I'm on the iPad. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get into it. Discussion of the week. Oh, no, sorry. News. So Challenge Series announced their winners. And I've got to be honest, when I read the, the winners, I was like, who? Yeah, that's what I thought I'd just bring up. <laughs> um, no, but Matthias, uh, Mat- Mattis Magrier, uh, I don't know if probably I have heard second. of him, but he's he's, not- he's, he's, uh, he's been going good. He... he uh, he was doing really well in one of those PTO races, and so he's taken out the boys' title, and Magna Neuvolt, uh took out the females' race. Um, so it's just a nice little bit of a bonus. It's not bonus huge money. Them, but so, for example, um, <laughs> oh, so excuse me. I mean, Matthias came on really strongly late in the season, um, and I think though with this series, yes, it's a nice little bonus. But with what's going to be happening next year, when you're going to have the PTO series, you're going to have the Ironman series as well. Whether athletes are going to target this, I'm sure they'll still do some challenge races, but they're probably not going to be overly motivated. But it does just create that pathway, and so we're not super familiar with those names. Uh, although Mathias, Mathis has had a really good season, he's still, you know, prior to this year, hadn't done heaps. Um, but it just creates another pathway for that up and coming athlete. Mm. I guess from the challenge point of view, you know, they want to get the rock stars racing, and they're probably not going to do that. But it's a nice little development pathway for the athletes where you can, um, you know, potentially you earn just a little bit of extra bonus money in a sport that's bloody hard to make across from. Yeah. It is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. But, and these are kind of, uh, like this this kind of bonus isn't going to motivate your rock stars. Yeah. But again, as you say, it keeps maybe the second or third tier, hmm. it gives them a bit of extra money. Which so if good. I look at Matthias's, uh, Matthias's Migria, he's currently ranked sixth in the, in the PTO rankings. Um, so... His highlights for the season where he got his most points were at the US PTO Open, 70.3 World Champs and the Challenge Championship. Um, he had three wins on the Challenge Series. Um, he got fourth at the 70.3 World Champs, fourth at the PTO race uh, in the US Open. So quality athlete, but just one we haven't, you know, pretty, still pretty new, which is why we perhaps haven't heard of him. You know, this was really a breakout season for him. So um, we don't want to sort of... Um, 
discredit him saying he's not one of the top athletes because no, his no. ranking certainly indicates that. Um, on the females side of it, I'm just going to look up where uh, our female was. So I'm he's having to scroll down a little bit here. So, yeah, she's not even in the top. 30 from what I can see. Okay, well, there Great you go. preparation here. It's late night. Well, last I, night. I threw a question at you, John. Yeah. You know, I threw a question at you, you know. Mm. Um, okay, so PTO have had the end of <clears throat> end of season's rankings for the year. And interestingly, so you put a question here. How many of the long course athletes are in the top ten? Now And so I'm talking here athletes that are focused on Iron Man. They might do both distances, but they do Iron Man. Because you'd say Blumenfeld hasn't focused on Iron Man this year. Yeah, that's true. You know, but so he does Ironman. But there's some athletes in there that exclusively only do half distance racing. Um, so if we look at the top ten on the female side, have a little think to yourself: How many athletes do you think are in there? So we go female only first. Do, only do seventy point three. Only do seventy point three. Yeah, and the answer is we've got one, two, three, four. Five. So half of the top ten and only the do seventy point three. So you've got Ashley Gentle who's second, Taylor Nib is third. Um, you've got Paula Finlay who's seventh, Imogene Simons. I don't think she does any Ironman at the moment, uh, and Emma Pallant Brown who doesn't really do any Ironman either. So five of them. So the current rankings are Anne Haug finished the year on top, just edging out Ashley Gentle who. Her points was 97.83 compared to 97.67. So it's bloody really close. You know, you're dealing in small decimal points there. Ashley Gentle was second. Taylor Nib was third. Lucy Charles Barkley fourth. Laura Phillip fifth. Kat Matthews six. Paula Finlay seven. Daniela Reef eight. Imogene Simons nine. And Emma Pallant Brown tenth. So they're all going to get a nice, uh, healthy pay check at the end of the season, which is good on them. So if we go um, to the men and we look at the same question, mm. uh, I'll name the 10. So we've got Christian Bielenfeldt was number one. Magda Stedley got second. Jason West in third. Yeah, for, you wouldn't have picked him as third, eh? Yeah, well, he did he very did well, well at the PTO races. Yeah, but you know, like, you know, like yep. if you were to say the top athletes, you, you know he's a good athlete, but you wouldn't have mm. say he's at next level. Mm -hmm. uh, Jan Fredino fourth. Uh, Peter Heimannick. Heim how do you say his name? Heimerich. Marthus. Uh, Mattis. Mattis. We were just talking about him then. Uh, Rudy van Berg. Berg uh, Leon Chevalier. Uh, Sam Long. Patrick Langer is 10th. And so, who are 70.3 athletes here? So we've got Jason West. It's one. Mathis is two. And Sam Long. Yeah, he's done a couple of Ironmans, but you definitely call him mainly a 70.3 Which is interesting, eh? Because we've said, now the PTO races tend to help the, the shorter guys. Mm. But actually, in the rankings, I am in uh, on par, or if not better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so good to see fifty-fifty in the females. Um, so uh, yeah, I just think it's genuine interest, interesting. Um, out of that top ten, you know, we're going to see Jan Fredino disappearing. Um, you know, his the reason he got a good ranking there was winning that one PTO race because he didn't do much other racing um, at all. So we have yeah. a Norwegian guy. I've totally got blank on his name. What's his name? Um, Gustav Eden. He was Eden. Oh, he just didn't. He did, he did nothing this season. I mean, he had a he had just a terrible season trying to coach, focus on short course. Also, had the tragedy of his, his mother dying, which affected things. So, he just had a shocker. Uh, just try, but he was mainly trying to do Olympic short stuff. course. So, yeah, interesting. Okay, so if we if we kind of do the men's first, so next year Fredino is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. If we look, if we go down like past ten, you know, like if we look at like a Lionel Sanders, he was. He didn't, have, he didn't have a great year, Lionel Sanders. Yeah. yeah so. uh, are we seeing the end of him? Uh, yeah, I think there's definitely some athletes that are on the way out. And, um, he's only 35. Yeah, but he's been in the game for quite a while now. And, uh, you know, you've only got a certain amount of time at the top. And the, the game is changing pretty rapidly. Brownlee? Um, Brownlee's his, his, history. <laughs> <laughs> history. I'd love to see. I really 35 as see, well? Yeah, I want to, but again. But he could pull off one race. So he's the old one that... Uh, you wouldn't be surprised if there's one stellar race in a year. Yeah, potentially, but again, he's just been at the top of his game for so long, and you see it with so many athletes. Once you over, you fall off the cliff, it's pretty hard to come back to get to the top. He will still have a good race in him, but you know what we saw at the PTO European athlete, uh, Open. You know he was good for um, yeah, halfway on the run. run. Yeah, but I, I think Braden Curry. Yeah, another one that's uh, Braden Curry. Um, 
probably still got a good Ironman in him, but the short course stuff, uh, well, not short course, half Ironman, I think his day's the same lay low, only uh, 13th in the rankings. Joe Skipper? Uh, yeah, I, I just He's think. 35? I think. He got, he got 36th. Uh, those guys can still have a career, but winning championship races and winning PTO races, I think if you can't swim, you haven't got a that much of a chance of winning them. You can maybe run yourself into the top five. And it has to be long course only. Mm. You couldn't mm. you couldn't PTO championship race, could you? No. Swimmers are no gone, chance. Aren't they? Yeah. So exciting times. Sports evolving, which is great. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing what happens in the next year. What about the females? If we just do that same thing of fading away females, um, or, or you know, at the end of their career. Um we've well, obviously got Daniela Reef who said she's um, you know, that she won't be Going back to Kona. Oh, um, did you say that? Did you? Yeah. So this year will uh, sounds like it's going to be her last year, um, and she'll finish off in, in Nice. So um, Anne, down, I mean, mean Anne Haug, she's a top ranked athlete, but I'm pretty sure Anne Haug's forty. Uh, so she's just impressive. But she's isn't still it? going strong. Yeah, she's yeah, forty. She, yep. Yeah. Um, she's just impressive, isn't it? Yeah. So she's she's going strong. Whether we see Ashley Gentle go long at all, I don't know. Taylor Nib is just going to absolutely crucify everybody once the Olympics is done. And Do you think she's going long permanently? Taylor Nib, post Olympics, no, I, I think she'll she'll be doing a Christian Blumenfeld. She'll try to do it all. Yeah, um, and she's probably got the goods to be able to do that for a few years. Uh, so a lot of you know the rest of the top ten. I think they're all they're Lisa all be sticking around. She'll be probably the end of she's yeah. been around for a long time. Thirty nine. Yeah. She's got the new world fastest ever bike course. Um, but some of those ones outside the top 10. Um, Ellie Salthouse? Uh, she's been around. She, she's still going oh, she's strong. Sarah, Sarah True, you know, she's uh, she's got a baby on board. She's doing university and stuff as well. Um, so I don't think there's any that are, yeah. You know, it's not so obvious in the females, is it? Mm. So good times. Well done to everybody for getting a good PTO ranking and getting a paycheck at the end of the season. I think the thing with the PTO that it's going to be really interesting to see what happens is uh, when the hell are we going to find out about the rest of the races. So we know the European Open, the Ibiza is going to be on. We know Singapore is going to be on. It sounds like there's going to be six events around the world, uh, but they're just holding off making those announcements so they don't look stupid if something, if they announce something and then have to change it. I think they're really just waiting by the sounds of it to 100% sure make sure everything's locked and loaded and they know that they need to do these races in good venues because um, if they just do them out in the middle of nowhere then yeah, the best might. race was Singapore wasn't it was, oh no was, and the European one was, no, they're, they're, all yeah. the PTO races were, were fantastic this yeah but year. some of them didn't seem as like the Singapore and the European one mm-hmm. it had a bit of feel yeah um, and so I think that's what they want to get right they need to have crowds yeah, and I think they recognise that because if you don't have the crowds, yeah, like last know. year's races, kind of, yeah, it's just like in a park. And the yeah, Collins Cup was a similar. There was no crowds there, mm. so. But a lot of people made their plans for the season, um, so they need to get a hurry up and get it on. Is there going to be a Collins Cup? I know we're not. I, it seems it's dead. Mm. What's interesting is I've said nothing about it. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just like oh. <laughs> A horrible story, but you know the Kennedys had a daughter they kind of got rid of, right? You know yeah, the story? No, probably not. But no, no, so there's a story of the Kennedy family, and they, they what happened was back in those times she was, I think mentally, um, I don't know the exact word for what she had, but she wasn't all there basically, mm. and they tried like almost like a brain shock therapy or something mm-hmm. like. Now um, I, I, someone will know way more than me. This is very loosely, mm. and um, and it just went wrong, mm. and so they kind of just. Sent her away, and it was kind of you know, the Collins Cups is a bit like that, you Just know. Go away, don't, don't, hey, don't mention it. Like, like, at least come out and say, Hey, look, it didn't work. And, and you <laughs> yeah. know, we, we were trying to, it was just like this year, what happened? We were waiting for Collins Cups to be announced. It's and actually poor form, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Just front up, say, Hey, look, it didn't work. We, we, we'd love to come back to it in the future. We see a format, we need to figure out how that format's going to work, mm. and we're working on it. Give us, an, give us a PR announcement. I know, we get about flipping five a day from Iron Man. Yeah, challenge. Um, yeah. Torsten's come out with a little booklet on uh, Sebastian Keenlay, who's uh, hanging up the boots. So in 2012, Keenlay won the 70.3 World Champs and raced his first Iron Man World Champs. Um, so with Sebi's help, uh, Torsten's put together a close look at Sebastian Keenlay and his first Kona. Um, he's got photos and texts, etc. And it's just a little... Um, thing I haven't read myself, but it's only three euros. So oh, get on there, have a little, uh, have a little read when you, yeah, 
kicking back over the holiday period. Okay, next thing that's been announced is Iron Man has now announced it's got a brand new event. Oh, by the way, let's just go to try. I'll put a link to it in the show notes for that magazine. Uh, Iron Man has announced a new race in Japan. It's going to be happening on September 15th, 2024 at South... Oh, you, you've been to Japan. Hakodo? 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 Uh, they've already got one, haven't they? So this is the second? No, no, this is the first. They haven't, they oh, haven't they had a race in, in Japan for donkey's years. Uh, and there's so few iron distance races in Asia. This is fantastic because, uh, yeah, there's just not that many events. They have one in Philippines these days. I think Korea's back on the table, I think. Um, but there's very few iron distance races. So, uh, and, and what about Japan, 7.3s? Yeah, there's lots of 70.3s. So why doesn't it translate? Um, well, it's just bloody hot to do races over there. It's really, really hard. Yeah. Uh, so you can get away with it in the 70.3, but do Ironman in those sort of conditions. Granted, in Japan, different story. They've got a different climate. You know, some parts are really hot yeah. and it's a bit cooler than other parts. Because um, Japan was one of the original five, wasn't it? Back in the it day? It was, yeah. Because yeah. what, you had America? You had, you had No, you didn't have America. Well, you had you Hawaii. Had, you had Hawaii. Yep. Yeah. New then Zealand. You had New Zealand, Australia, Japan, and, and Germany. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. So good where, to see that come back. Away? Uh, well, we were doing the show when, we, when it first started. Yeah, I think yeah, it's kind of come and gone a little bit in Japan. They've had different venues and stuff. So yeah. good to see it coming back. Okay, last week I put a discussion out there. And I, I'll be honest when I put it out there, John. I wasn't sure if it was a great discussion. Mm. No, not that we had lots of answers, but it turns out it was actually quite an interesting discussion to think about. So the discussion was in 10 years from now, what will be the three most remembered things from the year of 2023? And again, we didn't get a huge amount of comments, but it was actually an interesting thing to think about. So um, Ben Shure has started off and he's got Mike Riley's retirement. Was that this year or was it last year? Yeah, I, can't, I don't know. Yeah, it was either, it was either early this I, I think it was last year because he did Kona at the end. Or did, maybe he came down to Ironman New Zealand in March because he loved coming to New Zealand, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, that might have been one of his last ones. Um, no, because um, who do I do? Um, who's the great guy who I do the commentary with at Christchurch? Brian Ashby. Ash- oh, yeah. Mm. Um, he, was, he was at my Pack and Save Triathlon Festival the weekend. He's a great guy. Yeah. Lovely guy. Um, he did the commentating at Ironman this year, I think, because they, they had a team. Mm-hmm. So he's part of the Ironman team that does the Australasian races. Yeah. So I think probably the Never Riley, maybe, yeah. I'm thinking. So maybe it was 2022. Um. Right, that's what I'll do. Uh, Ned Phillips, Messick, effing up Iron Man, Iron Man throwing Kona in the bin. Mm, I don't know what the other one was. Mika Sulikov beating Sam Laylo in a sprint. I'm not quite sure what that which one that one was. And that won't be a memorable 10 years from now then, will it? No. Uh, yeah. Wayne Rosso said bad refereeing calls. Um, so we had obviously the Lionel Sanders incident where he crossed over the centre line or the imaginary centre line, which you're not allowed to do. Um, and there's been a few other drafting if you had a wild ones. But yeah, but yeah. People, was Hayden, was the Commonwealth Games was, was last year, wasn't it? Commonwealth Games was last year, I think. That helmet taking off was a yeah. bit of a cock up. But they break the rules. They rules to break the rules. No, but he did. Hayden the Wilds was a funny one. Mm, that was borderline. Yeah, that was borderline. Richard Twenty Nine has got his own draft penalty. I'm in New Zealand. Yeah, we're not going to be remembering that. John 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 Newsom saying, if you're breaking the rules, you're breaking the rules. Yeah. Uh, Gareth Holbrook's got woman only in Kona, which I think is probably the biggest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucy Francis winning Kona, I think, is actually true true as well. Lucy uh, Charles Barclay winning. Sorry. Kona. Yep. Yep. And then uh, Taylor's first Kona. My bet is she'll have won several, several in a decade from now. Mm-hmm. Mark Thompson, one of his, was uh, Jan retiring. I think you know he is going to go down as one of the greatest Ironman athletes. Um, so him retiring this year is is a big deal. Um, his, his legacy is an interesting one because he won three Ironman World Championships. Mm-hmm. Um, potentially could have won five because mm-hmm. the COVID per- period we mm-hmm. lost an Ironman. Mm-hmm. He had a couple of injuries along the way, which is all athletes which face. Is normal, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. know, like the COVID a, years, definitely. Couple, COVID years about. hurt his hurt his legacy because you know mm. he was dominant, wasn't he? Mm. You know, when, COVID, when he, he was what a perfect athlete he was, eh? Yeah. Um, Belfong has got Ashley Gentle dominating the PTO series. Lucy Charles Barkley winning Kona in a history making all women's world championship, and the amount of money I spent holidaying in Kona, uh, in Hawaii to watch the race in Kona. <laughs> Brian Bryan, uh, one of his was no no Collins Cup, um, which makes you wonder. I don't know, what did he say? He said Colin. That was his first point. So that was the Colin Chartier drugs case. Oh yeah, true. Then Lucy um, Charles winning Kona, and then no Collins Cup. 
which one makes you wonder if they cancelled because of the name, so they didn't want to be associated with uh, Colin Chartier. I very much doubt that, but hey, good, yeah. <laughs> interesting thinking. Uh, Michael Solomon's got how the challenge series grew, how Ironman focused on market share, losing focus, and how qualifying for Kona became secondary to the world champs. The dream for every Ironman, uh, Ironman at triathlete was Kona. I'd also like to add a fourth being the officials ruling on drafting where the course does not suit standard drafting rules. I remember exiting at a highway where all athletes ahead slowed to take an exit. This caused bunching as everyone else during the hit the brakes at the same time. However, at the exit group, the athletes of approximately 10 at a time were pulled into the penalty box. The officials ruling being correct said... It's the athlete's responsibility to maintain appropriate distance. However, logically, this was ridiculous. I think the drafting benefit is out on the straights. Therefore, it should only be used at that time. I don't think that's something we're going to remember in no, 10 years' time. interesting point. But yeah, yeah not really this discussion, but yeah, fair enough. P- Peter Fitzwellers um, from Christchurch. He had a couple of points, but uh, one of his, which we haven't mentioned yet, is Daniela Reef setting the record at Rote with an 8.08.21, which was absolutely staggering. Good old Hans, I'm going to say Sammy Link, has got the $800 fee for an Ironman, because in 10 years from now, it's going to be 1800 <laughs> We we'll think it's cheap now. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so I think that covers most of them. But when you think about, it, I know I understand what you're doing with the the question. But could we remember what was happening ten years ago? In any oh no, I think sport? I do. I do think this there'll be. Two, I, I think mm-hmm. losing winning the first time. Yeah, because because hers was well, she got five seconds, didn't she? Oh yeah, but not so much her winning it. I think what's going to be remembered is the fashion that she did it in, in terms of we've never seen somebody basically solo TT a race before. Yeah, true. Never, but it, I think it's both. Yeah. Because it was, you know, it's the Mark Allen story, wasn't it? And the Chris McCormick sort of story yeah, as well. No, yeah, Mark Allen was, you know, not 89's arguably the most talked about race in the history of sport. And it's, it's a great race. But it's a great race because mm. Mark Allen could never win Kona. Yep. And then Lucy Charles Barkley, was it five seconds? It was four, quite a few, whatever four it was. Four or five it was seconds. Quite a few. Like yeah. heartbreaking stuff. Mm. And then, as you say, to do that, and it, like, that's, that's, we'll be talking about that forever. Mm. So, this, that definitely Lucy's win. Um, to me, the, the, the splitting of the races, mm-hmm. that, that will be remembered in 10 forever. And then, what else? Uh, I had Danielle's wrote one. I don't know if we'll be talking about that, but we probably should be talking about it more because it was a staggering performance. It was an awesome field. And she just pulled their pants down and just yeah. absolutely annihilated them. So I remember running down to the canal and I didn't see... Oh, you were there, were you? Oh, yeah, well, I was racing. Oh, that's right. And uh, don't, don't, well, I've tried to forget it, but... I was, <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Danielle. <laughs> but I was running down there and there was a, and the, it was like second, third and fourth were all really close. I was like, oh, that's going to be a really close race and didn't realise that Danielle Reef was so far in front of them, didn't even see her. Um, so yeah, she just obliterated them. So I think most of my points were that you people have raised. I think on the short course front though, um, it was another year where the favourites on the boys side screwed up the last race and didn't win the world championship series. Oh yeah, true. Hayden Wild and Alex Yi both uh, cocked up for the second year in a row. Um, the expansion of the PTO tour this year was awesome um, and the calibre of the racing was brilliant. The, you, only a couple of people mentioned um, Colin Chartier, another you know really significant doping case, and then the dropping of the Collins Cup we've kind of already discussed. So it was it was quite a big year for, for, for yeah. significant... Historically, looking back, like again, mm. in 10 years from now, I think the three will be men's at Nice, the mm. woman's Kona with Lucy's win, mm. and um, what was the third one? Uh, that's I, probably it. Really. I just think, yeah, the moving of the world championships from from Kona is the biggie and, and what that's going to look like, you know, 10 years down the track, whether we whether it's going to be a, a failed... Uh, Failed sort of mission, or whether we go back to having a one-day race, or what the hell yeah, happens. They're, they're but it's going to take it? a few years to to sort of figure out what's how that's going to pan out. I don't think they'll ever go back. Will they? They'll never go back to. I don't know. Don't no, it's. I think I met the ex-partner. Yeah, true. I don't know. Yeah. Have you ever done that? No. 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 Never really. Yeah. I, had a, I had a friend. His parents. No, that's right. So the parents broke up, and then. The father just bumped into his high school girlfriend, like, mm. and they're like, and he's like sixty. Mm. Now together, <laughs> yeah, nice. 
yeah, it's bizarre. That'd be a bit of a bizarre experience. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so there you go. So 2023 will be remembered. Here's a question for you because we've got a bit of time. Big year next year, we've got the Olympics. Mm-hmm. What are the significant things you're looking forward to next year? What this PTO series is going to look like and how the athletes um, support it support it, and choose what they're going to do and versus doing the, the Ironman series where there's also going to be a prize, a bonus prize pool. So I think we're going to see a real divergence of athletes because if you go into the PTO series, it, you know, it sounds like you're going to be contracted. You know, I don't know if you have to do all the races, yep. but you're probably going to have to do Four. most of them. Yep. Um, and so we might see quite a divergence there. In and terms we're kind of seeing the, the cementing of it now, aren't we? Like mm. the last few years, it's been trialing you know they bought the first year was just the collins cup and then we had a couple of pto races and now you know it looks like next year is almost like the first set in stone of what the future looks like for the pto series mm. ongoing mm. and whether you know how many iron man ath- how many iron man's athletes do if you're doing the pto series and you're going to do you know four to six of those races what other races are you going to do? Are you going to do? You got to do an Ironman to qualify somewhere. So mm. is it six, six, you know, five PTOs plus a, a couple of Ironmans? Um, yeah, it's going to be going to be interesting. You bring up a good second point, which is how much will the new bonus payment of the Ironman system actually influence what's happening in the pro racing? Because mm. we have seen the the weakening of the other than you, you really your Kona, because even the championship races. Aren't mm-hmm. that great now, are they? Mm. So it'll be interesting to see. Does that pull back a certain level of athlete to Ironman racing? Uh, we've got the Olympics. Hopefully. Yeah, Olympics should be great. Yep. What mm-hmm. else? Anything else? That's 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 enough for us. Yep. We've got the the females going to Nice. So oh yeah, be interesting be to see how well that event is supported, not just on a pro level. Like the pros are all going to rock up, but how many females will actually rock up to to make that? event really significant you know this year in Kona we saw fantastic numbers you know there was like 2,000 female only and and everyone thought it went really really well different story when it's going to Nice and a lot of people won't be using up legacy slots and things like that so um, I'm really interested to see how that goes and also whether you know the the cost of going to Kona whether that's going to start to really um, stop people going. Well, the other thing that we we kind of lightly brushed over before when we were talking about what we remember 10 years from now is kind of the watering down of getting to the World Championships. Mm-hmm. Someone mentioned it, but like, you know, I, like does it lose a bit of prestige now? Definitely, yes. You know what I mean? Like when I got to Kona, mm. mate, it took me two, two or three years to get there. Mm. Mate, that moment when you go on that board mm. and you're proud because there's only four slots in your age group and you got one of them, mm. you know, we're hearing some races. If you're finishing... 25th and yeah slot. and so does that you know like now a does does kona still hold public mm. public presence but you know like do, nowadays if you say you got to kona for triathletes you kind of go oh yeah mm. you know does it hold that kind of prestige and that kind of respect that or is it, is this year the year that starts to get lessened not just yeah. kona but even nice as well yeah. okay let's go to your quiz question john's quiz, quiz question. question who was the top three Male and females. females in the PTO rankings last year compared to this year. So this year we had Jason West in third, Magnus Ditlev in second, and Christian Blumenfeld in first on the boys' side. And then on the female side we had Taylor Nibb in third, Ashley Gentle second, and Anne Haug in first place. And I'm hoping that the PTO <laughs> rankings uh, are going to allow me to have a look. Have a look. So we'll come back to that later in the show and see if I can find it. Um, So who were the top three in the PTO rankings, male and female, last year? Good old John Newsom. He's been sent. So we're going into Coach's Corner. Coach's Coach's Corner. Corner. And someone sent him the old Wayback Machine. So it's called the Web Archive. Now, if you don't know what this is, is Wayback Machine is basically you put in a website and you can go and see the different changes it's gone through throughout the years of the website and obviously someone sent that to you and you found an article that you wrote now when did you write it john it was nearly 20 years ago so it was off um it was a guy coach and he uh, said oh i found this article you wrote and it was after doing iron man new zealand in 2005 which both of us did uh, i think i had a bad year that year no, you no, you won your age group. Oh, is it the year I won? No, yeah. no, I won. Oh, I did win my age yeah, group. That's right. No, yeah. We won right. Yep. And I thought, 
oh god and he goes oh it looks like a lot of the stuff you're doing back then we're still doing now and so i thought oh that's kind of good my philosophies and general yeah. training principles haven't changed that much uh and yeah it was just an interesting interesting read that i had on there so the um, question is does it does it hold up yeah and so this article um i kind of laid out my it was basically going from retirement so 2005 i came back to new zealand in late 2004 and had about i don't know five or six months or so um and probably only about, I got back in October, so November, December, January, February. Sort of had about four four months to get ready for an Ironman coming from a place where I'd had a couple of years of not doing much. Um, I had sort of built up a little bit prior to coming home and done a few tries over in the UK, but I was not in top game. And so the article headline was from retirement to 10th place at Ironman New Zealand in four months on part-time training. Um, and some of the things were, were, my plan was I really wanted to try to break nine hours. And this is back in the day when equipment was nowhere near. Like I would say if you broke nine hours back then, it was probably the equivalent of about an 8.45 now, yeah. I'd say at yep. least. Yep. Um, oh, big and, time. Yeah. And, and if you did 9.19, it's probably an 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> I did 9.19. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so some, some this article that I wrote, I uh, had sort of the key sessions, my long ride, um, which we did sort of midweek on, on a Tuesday, was straight after a swim, anywhere between four and eight hours. Uh, and I've written here that I usually did it with uh, with Bevan yep, and, yep. Uh, and, and Gordo. Gordo. And I normally got my ass kicked um, and my <laughs> because uh, I was really struggling to build my biking back up, but I kind of hung in there a bit. But yeah, we'd usually go... Yeah, 150 to 180 k's or so um, after doing a, a swim. And one of the things that I wrote in this article was something that I hadn't done in my sort of short course career prior to this, because I was still very green in Ironman, this is only my second one, was the inclusion of, of main sets within our rides. So we'd typically do a, you know, a gorgeous ride here, which was 150 k's, and would be including 50 minute efforts at um, Ironman effort or, or a little bit above, um, building sort of half Ironman effort. So I think that's a trap that a lot of people do is they go out do the big big bike rides but they won't be breaking it into doing you know sort of some intervals in there um, at varying efforts so that was a, a key part of the training um, what else did I have in this article you're yeah, doing lots of half Ironman simulations which I've sort of talked about on the show over the past um, one thing that I will go over in a moment is what my philosophy back then on the long runs I didn't do a great deal of long running um, my typical long runs were an hour 50 the longest run I did was 2 hours 45 um, most of them were around that sort of 2 hour mark typical week would look like this back then we swam Monday morning f and uh, for sort of four to five k uh, and then did a run session in the evening with some strength um, so a 90 minute workout Tuesday was our the sort of the big day a, a one hour swim followed by a four to six hour bike ride and a 15 minute run Wednesday was long run day so sort of backing that up on top of the uh, long bike day sort of an hour and a half to two and a half hours Thursday would typically do a bike ride in the morning, hour and a half to two hours with strength work and then a technique swim in the evening. Fridays was doing a swim, uh, sort of again four to five k's and a steady run around 60 to 70 minutes and Saturday was doing uh, two to three hours on the bike followed by a run, so sort of a three to four hour session. And I've written down here I was taking Sundays off so must have been the good partner having a relationship yeah, day yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you always prioritize it yeah. and, you still um, do that no I don't do much on Sundays <laughs> well, oh, I used to be the good partner uh, no nah, it's just moved on and this was pre-kids days and oh, I was, was working yeah. um, what else back then we didn't really have all the tools that we do here's, these days here's an interesting question because in your nutrition you say I'm a pretty small guy 174 68 kgs, kgs. <laughs> so that that's something that's moved on now a couple of kgs heavier <laughs> how uh, much heavier are you uh, I'm sort of 72-ish okay that's not uh, too bad but I should be back down at about 68 I think Back when we did rope a couple of years ago, I was probably getting getting back towards that. So yeah, that was sort of what we're doing. And when I looked at it, I thought, it's not that different to what I'm doing now. The three key things that are different is uh, my power, philosophy. Way more power. Yeah, I mean, the, the technology, then. but in terms yeah. of the training I'm doing, um, I do place more emphasis on the, the longer runs um, now than what I would have done back then. I think I was still probably young and sort of resting on my laurels a bit from the short course days. Um, so I definitely think the long run is important, providing you can stay injury-free, obviously. 
weren't weren't doing much strength training back then. Um, that's probably the one area, other area that's changed. And the one that has changed, which has been detrimental, is not really having a big swim squad. Um, back then, we were doing lots of four to five k swims. Yeah, AQ two, weren't you? Yeah, and so and a big it, pool. Big pool, long course meters. And there's a big, there's a big swim swim community at the time, wasn't there? And I was getting pushed then, whereas now I'm always the, usually the guy at the front of the lane. Yep. And, and it's 20 years later. And 20 so the years fact later. you were you were the guy at the front, mm. not, not not shitting on you, but it's that you know you're not the strong. You would have been mm. a better swimmer back in those days in theory. Mm. And yeah. I wouldn't have been at the front, so yeah. I was getting pushed more out of my comfort zone. So that's probably the three things that changed. But yeah, well, it was just, but, well, you must have changed a little bit in, in the way you're training. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, as you said, using the the power meter and GPS and stuff. Um, so I guess with the running, probably doing the same sort of stuff. You're just able to be a bit more specific with it. Yeah. And likewise on the bike, um, using power just to sort of keep you on task a little bit more. Back then, use heart rate um, a little bit, when a, a reasonable amount, but power was yeah, power has changed. Changed. Well, it didn't really come out until about two thousand. I remember it came out about two thousand five six, wasn't it? We've got yeah. those orange ones. What were those orange ones? Ergamo. Yeah. I think it was Ergamo. But they were hopeless, weren't they? Uh, mine one was, yeah. <laughs> it was probably operator error at the time a little bit. One thing you haven't written down here is um, indoor training. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. like, it was pretty rare we did indoor training sessions. Very rare. You know, and they sucked back in those days. It did. So back then, um, that was the 2005 Ironman, um, ended up finishing in 10th place, and Bevan was also had a good race winning his age group. Yep. Didn't break nine hours, went 9.04.30. Tell you what, Ironman do a pretty crappy job of having these historical results up there. I had to search for this, but you go to the Ironman New Zealand page, and it goes back to like 2012, and I'm like... What about the other 30 yeah. years or so? Yeah. Uh, the results it's, are it's there. It's a data page. It's not yeah. hard to do. I just, I mean, I found the timing company page. So splits back then, oh, that swim, that was pretty healthy. What did you do? 49.39. Wish I could swim that fast now. Bike was 4.58. Have uh, you got my splits here? Where, yeah, yeah. I'll okay, get that one. Yep. Uh, bike was 4.58 and run was 3.11. And that was a fairly healthy, positive split on the run. I, was, yep. I went through halfway, uh, well, uh, I think it was one hour 27. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, it was a bit of a fade there towards the end. Uh, luckily, finished 10th place and got prize money for 10th. And I had uh, Brent Sheldrake 12 seconds behind me. I could see him behind me. Oh, coming really? Down, finishing shoot. It was a bit of a sprint finish. I wasn't happy about that. Uh, Bevan, you finished in... I won my age group. I remember twenty second overall, nine nineteen. Swam fifty eight. Uh, Jeez, really? Yeah, because my swimming got better. Because I wrote, I did fifty three. I think now yeah. I wrote it's probably a different swim. Yeah, but I think my best in Ironman New Zealand was maybe fifty six. Mm -hmm. uh, Bike to 5.07 and ran a 3.08, so you outran me. Transition times, let's see what we did. Oh, you had a, a tardy. First transition for you was 4 minutes 32 and then one sixteen on the second transition. Let's see what well, I... It was quite a long transition, wasn't it? It was a long run, transition. Like, almost like a K. But you lost over a minute to me. Uh, mm. three three sixteen. Oh, man, my first my transition off the bike... I reckon I'm just about going to take that out. Oh, Brian Rhodes took me by a second. 59 seconds for me. Uh, in 58 for Brian Rhodes that could be uh, I reckon, uh, Greg Frain took me out as well by a second good old Greg Frain and Oliver Piggins is he still racing? Frain? no no don't no. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't, no, don't think he I don't think he is I still see him around a little bit yep. great athlete he was an athlete that man he was okay um, there you go so there's some interesting stuff and speaking of interesting stuff we've got a great interview coming off Gordo right here so here is Gordo Byrne and he's going to be talking about some aspects that he's using as he's coming back to being a triathlete. Radio team, if you've been listening to the show for many years, back in the days of the sort of early 2000s, 2005 to, to 20, about 2012, you'll know Gordo Byrne, who was on the show maybe earlier this year or late last year as well. But uh, former top athlete, um, came from being a and this is a, not a backhanded compliment at all, a mediocre age grouper to being a pro where he finished second at Ironman New Zealand, uh, as well as podiums at other Ironman races, won Ultraman World Champs, also wrote a book, did a lot of coaching and had a huge following back then. Then uh, making a comeback this year, uh, he's coming over to, to Europe next year and has sort of started to dip his toes back into racing. So welcome back onto the show, Gordo. Good to be back, gents. Um, I saw you did a little running race the other day. Um, so was that your first foray back into into racing or not? No, no. It's, well, I so my strategy with the racing is to start shorter and then move longer, and mm -hmm. that's got to do with kind of my endurance situation. 
as well as how my legs are handling it, but also not really sure how, you know, I'm not really sure what's going to happen when I start going hard again. Uh, and so the uh, shorter races keep it uh, reasonable. So my first race back was a 5K in April. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did that. But this one last weekend was a 10K. But in between those, I went back to Sweden and I did Otillo, World Champs with Colting. Yeah, I yeah. saw yeah. that. And that was more, that, that wasn't racing, that was participation. Uh, we 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 weren't really in uh, shape to race it, but it was a fun day. It was and and really what I wanted to see was did I like being out there all day and how well you know what's my endurance look like my all day fitness and that flushed that out for me. It also made me super motivated to get my swimming back mm -hmm. um, because you you know you you definitely don't want to be between islands in the Baltic and have your arms give up. Mm -hmm. uh, so it went well. Your, your wife time. is an ex-swimmer. Is she still, uh, and she was a very passionate swimmer. She's still in the game, Monica? She is in the game very much so. Yeah. And she is still swimming at the speeds that you would remember. So she's yeah. still swimming really fast. Yeah, she's she's with a, with a new crop of Olympians here in Boulder. And when I mean with them is like in the water with them, doing the same workouts. These are tri-Olympians, not swim Olympians. Yeah. But we got a squad... Uh, with uh, Julie Divins is the head yeah. coach and Julie is just putting together these fantastic workouts and word is spreading. Uh, so the 2024 hopefuls that are nearby have been dropping in and it's really fun to see uh, kind of lifts the whole game. I, I managed to get myself off the wall lane. Uh, <laughs> I've had that experience. But every every well. lane above me. So there's like the wall lane, there's me and everybody else is 120 faster meters. Yeah. Uh, for the workout, so it's it's a it's a high performance squat. Yeah. So back in the day, um, you know, when you were at your peak, you were, I, I guess for a ten k, you were probably I don't know thirty four, maybe thirty three, something like that for a ten k. Um, uh, thirty five off the bike. Thirty five off the bike. So cool that, and and a fresh maybe maybe thirty three high or something like that. What 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 are you what, faster? No. What what are you no. what are you what what was your first ten k of the weekend then in comparison? I was quite pleased. <laughs> I, I went I went sub forty. Oh, yeah. nice, good. Excellent. So I was I was very pleased with that, nice. and uh, it slotted right in with you know I use V dot scores those Daniel's yep. tables, yeah. and uh, slotted right in with where my five k was uh, in April. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm kind of on that fifty two fifty three kind of V dot. Uh, which is a great place to be, uh, you know. When I'm, you know, I'm turning 55 next week, so I'm I'm happy with that. There's, and, there's and, it's very encouraging. And what kind of is that, is that like 100 percent effort, or are you kind of still kind of building towards that? Or like... <laughs> well, okay, so I, uh, John Hellemans, who listeners will know, uh, has been advising me, and John, uh, I'm I feel very fortunate to have him kind of in my circle. And John, John, uh, I just casually threw in the fact that I was doing a 10K and immediately this email comes back that says, you are not ready to race a 10K. <laughs> and so he goes, he gave me, he said, look, just head out at a zone through, at, you know, like a moderately hard effort on feeling. And then it might come up into zone four, but don't, don't, don't push, you know, don't put yourself in the hurt because I've been having issues with my hamstrings, mm. my, the backside of my legs. And he helped me get back to training properly. He's like, don't throw it all away on some recreational 10 K that doesn't mm. really matter in the scheme of things. And so I followed his advice kind of, uh, <laughs> probably went a little harder, but that feeling tip was a really good one. So I ended up with even splits and a feeling at the end that it really was a best effort, but for the first 5k it certainly didn't feel that way it felt just like a tempo run but then mm. after in the second 5k it definitely started feeling harder and then every time i'd feel like i'm going into the red i'd i'd back off a bit but i had just enough stamina to kind of keep sitting on that four minute k pace which was really encouraging to me it's kind of a magic speed in triathlon four mm. minute k's mm. i've um so what the area I thought would be good to discuss today, you know, you, because you're making a comeback, we'll have lots of listeners that are maybe either rebuilding their fitness or they might have done tries in the past or they want to get back into it. And and I think when we first spoke to you, you were very much at the beginning of the journey and now you're, yep. I don't know, however many months it's been um, sort of since then. So I thought maybe discussing maybe five different areas where, you know, um, 
what things you're really trying to focus on to, you know, as you said, you're 55, um, you've got some good background, so you can probably get a little bit too excited at times. So I thought we'd maybe go through five, maybe five areas. So I'll let you sort of kick it off and we'll maybe interject and um, ask questions as we sort of move through it. Okay. Well, let's set kind of time horizon for the listeners. So balance training started 21 months ago and I started running again 18 months ago. Uh, so that'll give a bit of a time frame to folks. Now, have you guys ever heard the expression solve the monkey first? I have not. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's an American thing. Yeah. So if you want to teach a monkey how to juggle flaming torches while uh, riding a unicycle, first thing to do is to find the monkey. And what they mean by that is solve your toughest problem first. And that would be my advice to anyone listening to this. So sit down, figure out what you want to do, and then figure out what are the most difficult aspects of getting this done. So today we're talking about Ironman racing. So there's three things that I felt at the beginning, the last time we talked, were going to be very difficult for me. Uh, getting my run training back getting my swim training back and my volume tolerance. Those are the three things that I thought were going to be really uh, challenging. Now, uh, I signed up for Attilo because that actually handles or it would flush out where I'm at for all three, volume, swimming, and running. And what I found, which was really surprising, is you can take 10 years off swimming if you know how to swim in your head and get it back relatively quickly. Uh, I had a false start where I jumped back in trying to do 4K workouts and totally blew myself up and didn't get injured, but just did too much too soon. And so I stepped back and I said, hey, if I was coaching myself, what would I do? And I would put mm. together a 10-week program that was much more gradual. That's available if you Google my name and mm. swim game. It's 30 workouts over 10 weeks. And that is the program I use to get myself back to swimming. And once I got to the end of that program, I was able to introduce master's once a week, and then ultimately masters twice a week to get myself some challenging. So mixing longer as well as uh, like main sets, decent main sets came back. And that was really encouraging to me. I thought it was going to take me forever uh, to kind of get it back. And I'm swimming at a good level. So not the level that I was at an elite. So let's say mm. as an elite, I was a 50 minute Ironman guy, mm. sub 50. Uh, now, I estimate I'd be in about 57 minute shape, which took me many years as a mediocre age grouper, as Johnny mentioned, uh, to get there. Um, so now the real challenge, the reason I had stopped running was because I kept getting hurt mm. in my mid forties. And it was, it was just miserable. And I had a house filled with little kids and all kinds of stuff going on. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to shelve it. I'm going to ride my bike and lift weights and just train like a regular person, not try and do the whole, it was like, it was survival with the little kids. Mm. So, uh, I connected with Johan Reuler. Uh, have you guys heard of Niels Vanderpool in Sweden? He's, he's yeah. a five and 10 K world championship. Uh, Johan was Sweden's 2022 coach of the year. He's a winter sport guy, went to the Olympics three times, but he also has a keen interest in running and ultra running. And what I didn't know was back when I was crushing it with Klaus and Colting, uh, Jonas was doing a really good job of promoting me in Sweden. And oh. as a result, uh, Johan was reading all my stuff. And one of our podcasts, you guys and me, mm. way back, mm. the nutrition podcast, yep was given to Niels when Niels started doing this massive training volume. He's a big volume guy, uh, like 25,000 kilojoules on the bike in his base per, every week in his base mm -hmm. training and just ridiculous threshold sessions. But uh, Johan gave him the podcast that we did, our conversation to help him guide his nutrition because he was doing so much volume. And so there was this connection that I wasn't aware about uh, of. And then ultimately, Johan and I connected. He was doing Otillo uh in 2022 and i was like hey man i can help you uh get ready for that and you can help me figure out how to start running again and the running has been an ongoing challenge for me lower leg issues almost like my sciatic nerve feels sometimes like it's misfiring next to my hamstrings which causes my hamstrings to tighten up all these little niggles and stuff and I've really been constrained not by fitness or motivation, but just by my biomechanics, you know, just by how my body fits together. So I've had to be really patient. 
Uh, I've been, I got a PT that I see almost weekly and she's been great at keeping the muscles and nerves working well together. Uh, it's something called, they call it like nerve flossing and nerve yeah. glide yeah. having everything. Cause the hamstring is not just one thing. It's a series of things and, and just having everything move together. Um, and she was, she's been telling me, you know, run more often, don't let things lock up. And if you tell somebody like me to do more, it's mm -hmm. a really receptive message. Uh, so that's been that combined with deep tissue work as well has been great. So the, the running has been a challenge, but I had a breakthrough yesterday, my first two hour run, uh, and I was fine. And so it, it's coming. I just need to be patient. So when you think about getting running, so how much of, cause you, you know, you've spent a lot of time on biomechanics and things like that. So how much of, of the getting to the, where you are right now is other than what you've already talked about is load management and, you know, checking your form and stuff like that. So that's interesting. So, you know, John Hellman has been helping me with that too. So I, I know how to run and I, I know the technique that I want to deliver, but with these new limitations, what John's been working with me on is, well, look, maybe we need to modify from ideal to get you to something that you could actually do more running with. So tweaking and Jeff Schilt down in Texas who used to be our team doctor when we had the endurance corner team going, he's offered to get me in the gate lab for a similar thing and just do some analysis. And so I'll get around to that at some point. Um, and the really subtle changes, I don't know if I could even see them if I was doing video analysis, but he's talking about, you know, body position, trying to be longer, a little more upright. The sensation when I'm going fast is I used to always drive forward really strongly like I was going uphill, but it's more he wants me to think about more just um, not swinging the leg through as hard and keeping the feet closer to the ground. Okay. So these are great tips for where I want to take myself, which is back to long distance triathlon. They wouldn't necessarily be if I was trying to run a fast 5K, I'd have to be working at this problem from a different direction. And that's something for people to listen to bear in mind that are listening. Our races, these 70.3 and Ironman distances are relatively slow races. And it's a different type of running mechanics that will be successful for us, uh, for us to bear in mind. Now that third point, Johnny, uh, so was volume tolerance. And this has been a big shift from the old approach. As a young man, I could just chuck a ton of volume at myself and just hope it worked and I didn't get sick. And that does not work right now. So I've had to develop a system for stopping me before I get too tired. Because if you, if you put yourself in the hole over 50, you tend to stay there and you don't bounce back you know, with two or three days, uh, you can, you can lose a week or you can get chronically run down and then you're costing health fitness. So this period has been a lot of adaptation focus rather than load focus. So what I mean is if I'm tired, I don't put more load into my body. It's either a very easy day or light training. And that's, that's a shift. I used to just grind through week after week and you know just let the volume do the work but now i'm doing much less than i would have expected for my fitness and this is an interesting point too so you're going to have your life structure you're going to have what your body can tolerate and then i'm looking at volume as a result of that so it's not a target i don't go into my week saying hey i want to hit 15 hours or hey i want to fit 18 hours what I have is an idea of the key workouts that I want to get done this week or next week if, I, if I'm not ready for them this week. And then I just, I do those key workouts. So the two hour run yesterday, key workout. Now, however long it takes me to bounce back from that, that's how long it's going to take. I'm not going to jam another session in there just because it's in my calendar. And that means I have to be very flexible with my overall program, what I call dynamic loading. So the load's just based on how I'm, tolerating things and you, so that, that's a big change so you talk about you, you know the program is way more fluid now based on needs and and feedback uh, what other feedbacks that tell you because obviously there's you, 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 your own body telling you that you're feeling fatigued but are you using metrics for that and what are the metrics okay so i try and keep you can go crazy with metrics yeah so what, yeah. what i would tell people to do is figure out you want directly measured simple 
markers. You don't want to use these recovery scores and all that. I, you know, I look at them, but mm. they're not great. So I look at evening resting heart rate. That's one I find. If it's elevated, it means I push myself a little too hard, possibly today. And what that what that nudges me to do is put my training in the morning, first half of the day, and not uh, train late in the day, which means I'm sleeping better, which is important for the recovery. Mm. In the morning, I do morning resting heart rate. And I also do a sample that'll give me my heart rate variability. And so now, so it's evening and morning, checking in with my heart metrics. And then I do a very, we call it the Swedish active readiness test that I got from Johan. And it's, it's a zone one test. So give you, give your list. Uh, so it's like six minutes at 150 Watts and then six minutes at 165 Watts and six minutes at 180 Watts. Now all those targets are in my zone one. So it's uh so it's, it's a sub well, it's, it's below even like sub max. It's just, it's a really light load on the body. And what I'm looking for is, does my heart rate respond? Because if my heart rate doesn't respond, it, we call it the heart rate handbrake. I might be a little suppressed. And anybody that's trained for an Ironman knows the days where you get out on the bike and it feels like no matter what you do, your heart rate won't come up. You're too tired. So your, your body's just got you throttled down. The idea with this test is we see that day before it arrives and we can adjust training before we get too tired. And then at the end of that, I actually test the other end of the spectrum where I do a short duration sprint. So it's a 10 second sprint, max effort. And I look at my top five, uh, my watts for the five second, my five second watts. So I have a look at my top end and I watch what happens to my heart rate? What's my max heart rate when I do that? So when I do rev the engine in a way that's not fatiguing, do I get a heart rate response? Because sometimes my heart rate is really low at the beginning with that zone one test, but that's just because I'm I'm rested and I'm ready to go. I'm not excited. I'm just calm. And then I'll, I'll crush the sprint, get a good heart rate response. I'm like, hey, I'm good to go. Or this morning after my two hour run, I do this little test. My sprint watts are down. My heart rate response is down. I'm like, hey, it's just not going to be happening today. I know it's either a super easy day or an active recovery day, depending on how I'm feeling. Nice. You talked before about changing your technique a little bit with with your running, which I totally understand. And and I imagine at the moment not doing a great deal of high intensity work. How do you sort of envisage going forward that you're going to add that sort of load into your into your legs? You know, when we get into the back half of an Ironman, a lot of that is about that load and your quads and your calves being able to handle that. So going forward, if you don't think you'd be able to do the intensity that you want to, how do you think you're going to try to get that load in there? Time. Mm. Let let time do the work. It's uh, you know, Ironman's a volume and time game. Uh, you know, I got the terrain here that y'all have in uh, Christchurch. I've got hills and I've got flats and I've got the ability to run year round. I got a treadmill and really I'm just going to have to be patient and let the load come back into my legs and develop the durability that I had. I don't want to get back to elite level durability because I don't really want to train that much. I'm thinking more like fast amateur durability and bring bring back those sorts of loads. The other thing we found is breakpoint load. And I tried to push 60K a week a couple of times last summer and late spring, and I started getting niggles. And so what I, I do is I track my uh, seven day volume. And when I hit 50K, that's good enough for now. So I've got this max volume and now I'm working within the volume. So I'm putting a little bit of quickness in, put in some 400s in, I put the 10K race in, I do my my uh, my my testing, you know, maximal testing as well as submaximal testing, but it's all got to fit into this 50K week so that I don't overload myself more. And then once I've once I've been able to kind of tick the boxes on many months of that, then we'll look at doing some, maybe some volume uh, overload. But, you know, if you get 50K a week consistently, you can definitely be working towards 70.3 and half marathon performance at quite a high level, especially if you're cross training. Mm. Uh, Cause you know, my run volume is about a third of my total volume. So I got a lot of other aerobic conditioning happening. 
Mm, cool. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, I see you popping up fairly regularly on Instagram now. You're sort of doing like a little bit of a series there. I mean, tell us a little bit about what you're doing and if people want to follow you in a bit more detail. Okay. So on a, on Insta, you know, I, I missed my Swedish friends. They're, they're not on Twitter. And I, I really missed them when I went to visit them. So I was like, okay, I got to feel connected to these guys. I got to get back on Instagram. And so I'm on Instagram. So I'm like, okay, well, let's p- play the Instagram game. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I try and push a few things up to my story every day with what's happening in my life. Uh, so if people are interested in that kind of stuff, they can see that. And then I put these video tutorials up as reels. Uh, which is mirroring what's happening on my YouTube channel. And it's the idea of just explaining quickly uh, a little concept. And these concepts build on each other so that people can become more informed uh, with their own training. Because smart training isn't just for pros. I mean, I think anybody can use these techniques at any level. And with a lot of these things, if you're starting out or at the back of the pack, they can have a big impact on getting better, understanding how to train properly. And I want to make that accessible uh, to people. Uh, Alan Cousins has a great line where he says, you know, just because you're slower doesn't mean your your protocols have to be lousy. I mean, you, you can use these elite methods right across the performance spectrum and get better results. Uh, are you enjoying getting back into it? And what is the ambition? Ah, uh, yeah, I love it. It's, so when you're, when, well, I, I'll certainly many of your listeners will know this. When you're obsessed with endurance training, your brain doesn't have time to think about less useful things in yeah. terms of negative obsessions. Yeah. So in these, in the year before I decided to come back, my internal experience was awful. Oh, really? So I was, I was, I, I was, uh, it was just dark and my attitude was poor. It was negative. And, you know, a friend of mine, Jeff Schultz, said to me, hey, man, high performance is fun. In other words, if you get yourself back into it, you're going to enjoy it. You'll enjoy your life more. And that's really what is it, it's about. It's about enjoyment. It is a lot of fun. Now, as for my ultimate goal, I had a look at the, you know, you guys know the physiology. You guys know, the, well, Johnny knows the physiology, mm-hmm. Beth, you, the physiology of a sub nine Ironman. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we put the pieces together and we just look at it as an equation or, or whatever, as a physiologist, and we say, okay, we got this guy, me, a uh, former pro. I, I still think it's possible to go really fast at 60 years old. So five years from now. Mm, yep. And it excites me to try and shoot for that, even if I miss. Yep. So I missed in terms of winning an Ironman. And that was a very painful uh, experience, but I didn't miss out on the benefits of trying to get really, really fit. And so this journey for the next five years of trying to put together a fast Ironman is about, you know, it's going to set me up for this back quarter of my life, this 60 plus part of my life. And I think that that'll be, that's a worthwhile payoff, whether or not I go fast. Uh, And so no time frame, but I I, want to get back to being, you know, really fast. That's what I'd like to do. Just random question. Um, did you ever let go of not winning? And if so, how? Let go of not winning? Yeah, because, you know, I remember when we used to race, I remember you were always driven. I always found it interesting, to be honest. You were driven by the speech of winning an Ironman. I remember there was, there was something you, you were, you were you know, I always felt odd, to be honest. Um, that, that, that moment was real, but it was a real driver for you. That, and I think, think even when you retired, that you had, you know, you kind of released the speech that you were going to give. Um, and, um, but you never quite got there and you, fuck, you gave it everything you had. Uh, and so was it a hard thing to let go of? And have you let go of it? And, and if so, how? Uh, okay. I always <laughs> say yes to podcast requests. <laughs> and that's, this is right now I'm in therapy, right? Like this is, and I'm not kidding. So I get to make my speech, right? It was this yeah. thing that was very powerful. It was powerful enough for you to pick up on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This thing this desire to speak directly to people like me and share my experience. So I always say yes to a chance. Have I let, it doesn't hurt anymore. Like it used to hurt so bad. I'd like start crying when I was talking about it. And something. I was given a training camp and somebody asked me about Ironman. I went right back to it and just, I was like, sorry, I can't continue. Um, And, and so I would get overwhelmed with the emotion and the power of how much I really put into that effort. But you know, now with a bit of time, it doesn't hurt anymore. 
and it can be a real source of uh, of strength. You know, th those types of feelings can be uh, can help us get stuff done. Uh, so, but you know, I'm still the same guy. I'm still pretty motivated. So I, I I don't feel like I've transcended anything because clearly something drew me back to this, right? Mm -hmm. So I had this life that was out and then something drew me back into the, the triathlon community and I really enjoy being here. So it's there's a deep connection with uh, the whole process. And I just love hanging out with the type of people. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, my, my training partners, the folks I interact with online. I mean, all that, it's just great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, we look forward to seeing you back on the race course next year and um, we'll see what happens in, uh, in Alpe d'Huez. Um, I don't know what sort of shape I'm going to be in there. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can uh, have a little bit of a wager. He hasn't he isn't had downtime. <laughs> you know, he hasn't had 10 years off, so he's got the advantage. Yeah. yeah he's no. in great shape. Yeah. I follow him on Strava. I'm keeping an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> Not been much happening at the moment. So, I uh, know we look forward to seeing you next year. Thanks for your time. And, guys, if you want to check out Gordo, um, you just search for Gordo Burn and you'll find him. Have you a particular website or anything that people need to, to look for? I would say feeltheburn.substack.com for this audience. That yeah. that's the book that John and I are writing, and it's burn with a Y, yeah. uh, and no E. Just and and you're gonna find us on Substack, and we are putting out some great content, videos, mm -hmm. articles uh, every week, and uh, through that site, you'll be able to track us down on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the regular mm -hmm. places. And also, if you want to check out Gordo's other Substack, which I'm subscribed to, and it's, it's really great. What's what's that name of that one? True Wealth. Well. substack.com and that's that's about really family and finances and, yeah. and living a life of meaning uh you know trying to trying to put together a life that you'll be proud of uh yeah. and that's really what i'm trying to do as well yeah. you know, you thanks for your time and um i look forward to seeing you next year in july yeah it's gonna be great now we've recorded this after we've done this bit so hopefully you enjoyed that god it's always great as i said earlier he goes to a thousand layers so uh yeah jombo let's go into age group of the week. week good old matt facey sent through this one he's oh, to begin with i want to say kudos for such a great podcast i've been a massive triathlon fan despite never doing one i'm oh. in rural victoria in australia no, Victoria, no, no. My daughters and kids have been smashed by that storm. God, they had like a meter of rain in 24 hours, I think I heard. And my daughter lives in Kent, so we it's really hit. And she said, what's really, luckily where she lives, it, it wasn't affected. And her house is fine. But she said, the problem is the crocs. Ooh. Yeah, because because like basically, she said, we, we drive out of town, well, we're out of her area at least. It's like up to hip height, the water. Like it's mm. massive. But you see, you can't really go into the houses and stuff because... You got Crocs. Oh yikes! Yeah, and and so like it's you're really limited on, yeah, just trying to go get shit out of your house. Yeah, because imagine that being in by a Croc. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, um, I run and cycle for fitness and recently lost fifty k. Nice work, Lo mate. That's life changing. Yeah, mate. I'm absolutely proud of you. Um, your podcast gets me through every Wednesday morning, eighty to ninety minute run. Well. Enjoy your run today, mate, but we're bloody proud of you. I wanted to bring your attention to a massive age group effort, uh, the recent Ironman Western Australia in Bustleton. I don't know her personally, but I think I work with a relative who follows the progress of her achievements in triathlon. Her name is Regan Hollyoke, uh, an age group who not only finished fifth overall female, but won her age group by over 30 minutes. That's mental. I also believe she smashed a record for age group woman ever in an Ironman triathlon by two minutes, finishing in a time of 8.52. Also, she was in the pro field. She would have been fifth overall as well. I don't have a contact details, but Reed, she is a member of the Shepparton Tri Club in Victoria, Australia. I recommend at least giving her a shout out. Hell yeah. What an effort. What was her name again? Uh, Regan uh, Hollyoke, I think it is. H-O-L-L-I-O-L-L-I-O-L. A K E. Yeah, I'm just pulling out the results here. Yep. We'll go uh, to yes, yeah, so as you said, she did 52 minute swim, uh, 440 on the bike, and 313 on the run for an 852. As an 50. age grouper. She's in the 30 to 34 age group. Um, she beat home like Chloe Lane. She was racing in Kona last year. As you said, you know, she's, uh, yeah, I mean, she's tw 20 minutes behind Fenella Langridge, but. Uh, that's still a bloody impressive time. 
Well done. So Mate, you should race as a pro, Regan. Yeah. Hey, get some Re- money. Regan Holyoke, you are our age, age group of the week. week. Keep up your journey, mate. You're a bloody inspiration. Again, let's go into Wanger of the, the week. week. Okay, John, but pull up another. Let's go. Let's go 25 because Christmas Day is coming. It is coming. Now, you, fi- now, you finally got some presents under the tree, which yep. is good to see. Did, did we go shopping yesterday, actually? Got it done. Uh, okay, let's have a look. 25 okay. last week, and we're going to go 25, and it's good old Brett Johnson. Brent Johnson, nice work. Yeah, now, Brent Johnson, he's got GK. I'm just waiting for it to pull up. GK Endurance. There you go. Maybe He may be the coach. He's got the T-shirts. He's got the branded T-shirts on. Oh, he's had a bike crash, John. Oh. See that? Oh, oh, did you see Tams and Lewis on Instagram? <laughs> she, had a, she, had, no, but she had a crash. Right. And it was not good, John. No. Not good at all. No. Um, oh, it's a good look at that. Great. Looks like he's been in a fight. Oh, nice, nasty. Oh, you, you're, you're on your bloody bike. Okay, bloody I'll, I'll do it for a game. You, you fill, fill us in. Okay, so what did he do last week? So last week, uh, so you always love looking at his, he's been longest doing- Longest bike ride. Longest bike ride. Okay, I'll go longest bike ride, longest run. So his longest bike ride ever, he did 204Ks. His longest run ever, he did longest, I don't really show you the longest run. Yeah. Uh, but his fastest marathon is a 243. Nice. So good runner. Yeah. Uh, two, one, four, one, fifteen, uh, half marathon. Uh, he lives in uh, Willerton in Western Australia. Good on you. Uh, he does lots of, he, he, yep, he's, a, he's, he's part of the GK Endurance Club. Um, yeah. That's um, that's uh, Guy Crawford. Oh, is it? Mm. Oh, there you go. And Kate Bevilacqua. Yep. He's got lots of photos. There you go. He likes his gear. What is Brett? Brian Johnson? Brett Johnson? No. Brett, Brett Johnson. Yep. Brett Johnson. You are our right, right. winger of the week. week. Okay, Jumbo, let's go into questions and answers. answers. Okay, the top, top, the top three athletes in the PTO rankings last year. So does it year. mean you just got to go who got third? Because you've got to go Blumenfeld and... Gustav Eden, probably. Uh, and then... Jan didn't have a great... He was injured all last year. Yeah. And then Sam Lalo got second in Kona. Don't know if he did much else. Who's the young kid? No, he did well this year. Sam Lalo probably. Is that who you're thinking no, of? No, who's the other one? Who got second in Kona? Um, who got second? Oh, Max Newman. No, see, he was. No, he oh. he he did well in Kona last year. So I'm going to actually. But he didn't do much else. No. I'm going to go. I don't think it is, but I'm going to go. Actually, no, I'm going to go Sam Long. Third, third in the rankings. Just a bit of a random one. And then on the female side, I am going to go Daniela for... and Lucy. No, I'm going to go for Ashley Gentle in position numero uno. Uh, I will go for Anne Haug in second, and I'll go for Lucy Charles Barclay in third place. Okay, so I'm going to say that my third men is last year. Who had a great year last year? Mark, Marcus Tedlev. Marcus Tedlev? Oh, yep. Nice. Yep. Okay. Let's have a look. I'm just trying to open up this link. I've got it here. Oh, you've gone. Oh, you've, you've given me the wrong link, John. Uh, you've given me... What's happening here? I don't know. It's a bloody iPad. It's given me the my wrong... My family have got my, my computer up in Kiteri. His kids are on His kids are on bloody... Joke of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, end of the year rankings. Here we go. I've got it. So Break it to us. I can't, I'm not even going to get there. Uh, well, just give me the rankings. Okay. Oh, guess who won the men? Me. Oh, God. <laughs> what so a disappointing way to finish the year. I'm <laughs> beaten by Bevan on another quiz. So Blumenfeld, Eden, Eden. did live. Max Newman was fourth. All oh, right. Yep. So uh, think- Sam Lader was fifth. What about Sam Long? Come on, Sam Long. Yo, 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 man. Number 10. Oh, <laughs> Is that Jesus. what he says? He goes, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, 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 man. <laughs> and oh, then well, a female. I reckon I'll What did you say? I said Ashley Gentle, Anne Haug, Lucy Charles Barclay. So I went Haug, Reef, Bar- uh, Barclay. We both got two. Anne Haug first, Reef was second. Really? Yeah. And Re- um, Gentle. Because she won, she won the World Championships in St. Oh, George. Yeah. Yeah, and she might have won the seventy point three as well, maybe. Yeah, she did a pretty good year. Um, and then Charles probably got fifth, so it was Anthony Tidal got third. God. So I went overall. Yeah, you only got four out of six. I got five. 
Right. So let's just end the show now. Yeah. <laughs> let's just end the show. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go into your swim set. Did you oh, do a swim set? I did go swimming this morning. Um, we did a six, uh, 300 warm up, then 1250s, going butterfly freestyle, backstroke freestyle, breaststroke freestyle, drill freestyle, a few times through. Then we did four 200s pull, descend one to four, 100 IM. Then we did a 400, 300, 200, 100, getting progressively faster. 100 IM easy. Brought in a new challenge today that uh, threw people. Oh, they, here we they, go. They threw it. We had 425 towing. So you've got to tow the person behind you. So what, how do you do that? Uh, so basically you p- partner up and you push off and you hold the person's ankles. So you're acting like oh, a big bloody weight. That's going to suck. The person behind has to kick quite hard. Uh, oh, okay. And you've got to try to lift the person in front's feet. Like you don't want to drag their So you're not actually trying to pull them down. No, you're trying to lift their feet and try to keep their ankles sort of at water level. And then you've just got to do the best you can, try trying not to drown whilst you're being towed. Um, so I do occasionally. I just take do a stroke and take hold on one hand and then get back get back on. Is uh, it funny having someone grabbing your feet? Well, you're around your ankles. Does it feel weird? Oh yeah, yeah. It's like a dead weight. Yeah. It's great exercise. It's, it's a bit of fun. Yeah. But it's actually great exercise for really working on your what, your, your pull, catch, yeah. and you've really got to stroke hard. Key when you're doing it is not to breathe very often. You just got to get in there and just thrash it out. So how long does it take you? Oh, so with 25 metres, I don't know, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, probably 25 seconds, um, or however long it takes no, you to swim running. 25 length. seconds. Um, well, yes, yeah, no, it'd be about 25, oh, well. wouldn't be much more than that. Uh, so it was good times. And then we did uh, a swim as far as you can underwater, which is always a slightly dangerous proposition. <laughs> um, but because we do some 20, we do some 25 from time to time, but I want to see if I can get back up to doing a 50 underwater. Have uh, I yet? And I Because you've got to turn. Oh, the turn's good. You no, get a break. Oh, because I suppose you can push off. You push off. You get free time. Doing it'd be way easier doing a short course than doing a fifty meter pull. I got halfway down the second length, so that was actually pretty good. I think. Did anyone do a hundred? Fifty? No. 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 I think so. I probably got about thirty-eight meters or so. What's the longest you've ever done? Fifty. Oh, you've never got further? No. No. You're desperate just trying to get to that wall, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. No. It's um. Yeah, it's a little bit dangerous. You've got to be a bit careful about doing (laughs) things like that. But it's a good little challenge. So that was today's swim set. Oh yeah, John, let's say thank you to our patrons. Ian White Lightning Hersey. We've got Grant, the King of Swing Richards. And Michael, the King of the Castle, Morpeef. I remember meeting Michael very briefly in Kaiteri. He was up there with the family, going doing the Able Tasman track. Oh, good times. Mm. Okay, Jonbo, uh, let's say thank you to our patrons. If you do want to become a patron, and you are, first of all, if you are a patron, thank you for your support this year. Um, mm. It really does help the show keep doing what we're doing. Um Especially now, it's because getting ads is basically impossible. So, mm. um, so yeah, for those who are patrons who contribute to the show, you really are an important part of the show, and we really appreciate you donating money each week. Uh, if you aren't a patron and you do want to support us in what we do, just go to www.imtalk.me. Again, it really makes a difference. Uh, if you want some coaching, coach on com. Anything I do, bevanjamesiles.com, and you can email us at imtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Jombo, your ghost. Uh, organized a race at the weekend that was awesome and um, we had uh, oh, fantastic weather pack and save triathlon festival quite a few listeners were out there helping or participating and i put a little post on the old gram yesterday oh, uh it was sort of, a, sort of a half rant half thanking people half rant well it's like really appreciate the people that helped like I, one of the highlights for me at the weekend was we had the race did prize giving and by the time I, within I, I was leaving there by twelve thirty. Um, well, no, I wasn't leaving at 12.30. It was pretty much packed up by 12.30. Okay. It's like such a relief when yeah. everyone just digs in yep. and does it rather than me and a couple of So how do they go from positive to rent? Well, it's, it's the same people doing it all the time. Oh, okay. So, it's like, like, so my request to everybody out there is pull your finger out, go and help an event or whatever you're involved in, just volunteer a bit more time into just... I'm too busy, I'm too busy. It's like put some time back into other aspects of life rather than just saying you're too busy. So it was a bit of a rant. Yep, fair enough. And then uh, went to the Court Theatre on Friday. Really recommend uh, Something Rotten. If you oh, get yeah, to we go and it. see that. It was it, really good. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, really good. So if you get to see that. It was quite musical, funny, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. It's a good one. Did that. I tell you what, it's weird being home alone. I was home alone last night because the family have gone to Kaiteri. Did you stay up later? Well, we went out on the booze after our run <laughs> session. That's what he does. And, uh, yeah. And God, I'm out, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> just doing all that. 
Uh, so that was good. Got presented with a little thank you gift from the athletes oh, nice. that come along. Got a special T-shirt with about my backhanded compliments. I was going to wear it today, but I'm actually going what out. What does it say on it? Uh, what is it? JN Motivation or something. If it's not backhanded, I didn't mean it. Because <laughs> I'm known for backhanded compliments, which are meant to be coming from the right place. Encouraging, but sometimes people take it slightly the wrong way. Uh, so that was uh, that's been my week, Bevan. Going on holiday tomorrow morning, very early, and looking forward to that. I, I, I had a, a, a few things happen this week actually, but one thing I did see is I saw the hot chick and Gail out running. Yep, yep. Good Gail old. wasn't there last night. She was supposed to be. That's a good point. Yeah, come on, Gail, sharpen up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was nice. But uh, we do a band called the Teskey Brothers. Have you heard of the mm-hmm. Teskey Brothers? I have not heard of the Teskey Brothers. Porno recommended. Porno. Rec- I love going to. Like, I love. Um, one thing I decided that this year was I'm just going to do as many experiences as I can. Mm-hmm. So if someone offers something, I'm going to do it. And so Porno mm-hmm. and I've Porno goes to a lot of concerts with his friend. Um, on, got Blake on him, um, one of his friends anyway. And so I've been going with them a lot. And Pornu asked me if I wanted to go to a band called Teskey Brothers. And they're kind of like an Australian, two brothers with a, a band around them, kind of look like Sufis our age, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. Uh, but oh my God, this guy can sing. Yeah. But it's kind of, you, if you close your eyes, you think it's like an African American blues singer. Mm-hmm. And there's one song, which was my favorite song, and they did it as the last song. And it's kind of literally just clapping and singing. Mm-hmm. And oh, the crowd, like, it was pretty special. So I had that. Went to the Wonka movie. Right. I heard that was quite good. I saw a review of that. Yeah, it was good. good. What you expect. Family movie. Good times. Uh, Funny thing, couple of funny things. We did have shopping yesterday. My mum said to me, I ring mum, because what I do with my shopping, John, I just ring mum and say, what does everyone want? Mm -hmm. And then I just go buy everything. Ring mum, what do you want? She goes, oh, I want a pot. And so I said, oh, yeah, well, I'll get your pot. I'll get your voucher from it. She goes, oh, the problem is I don't know which store I want to get it from. So I said, well, why don't I just give you, I'll make you a voucher. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I'll give some cash and you can get support. So then I thought to myself, well, what I do is I make a voucher for a marijuana pot, right? You know, like you know, yeah. this, you know and I said to Joe, well, we'll get we'll, we'll give her the cash and a tinny. Yeah. Now, when, do you know what a tinny is? Yeah. What's a tinny? It's like a little marijuana joint holder. Uh, well, is it? <laughs> These people who haven't done drugs. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we can't. Do, so, for those who aren't druggies, at least in New Zealand, yeah. when you buy marijuana, you get a tinny. Now, what a tinny is is your drugs basically wrapped up in tin foil. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. A, that's a tinny. And and we're going we're going to the mall. <laughs> so you're a bit like my wife. So Joe's never done drugs in life. I think yeah. she did it once when she was like ten. Yeah. Well, no, when she was like a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> she got onto it early. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I think she did it once. She did it once when she was like. 17, 18, and she crashed her car. Right. And Joe, Joe, like, I've been with Joe for how long? Bloody years now. I've seen her drunk like 10 times. Like, mm. she likes her wine, mm. but she never goes to the extreme. Mm. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I said, oh, good. Well, well, what I'll do is I'll make a voucher and we'll get, I'll make putting money in a tinny. Mm. So we're going to the mall, and Joe goes, oh, we need to buy a tin. Mm. And, and I just cracked up laughing because <laughs> I go, what do you want to a tin for? She goes, for a tinny. I was like, you've yeah. never done drugs, have you? No. So, me and Joe, like yep. peas in a pod. Yeah, peas in a pod. Been there once, done, that's enough for me. Did you do, have you done drugs, have you? Once. And it was in Amst- What was the Amsterdam. experience? It was horrible. I did not like it at all. <laughs> no, not coming back there again. Not ever. good if you don't like it because you're there for a while too. Once you're stoned. Yeah. No, that was not fun. So we had that, and then oh, hey, money, oh, money, money. Yep, yep. You did that last week. Gone yeah. really well. Mm-hmm. Even did some strength exercises this morning. Nice. Went to the surgeon. He said, "Yeah, my surgeon's real casual way." He goes, "Because the post op, I said, what should I do?'" He said, "Do what you want to, mate." And I was like, <laughs> "I said, I'm pretty extreme." He said, "Just, just listen to it." I said, "Okay." So I, I didn't do, I didn't do anything lower body and then on Thursday a week after he said you can do some easy cycling so I've been doing stationary bike for like 30, 40 mm. very low like heart rate at 100 mm. um, and then I went to him he said, he said what can I do he said ah, I didn't do anything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, should I book a physio? He said, nah, you'll be right, mate. He said, just again, listen to it. And I said, could I do strength? Yeah, just listen to your body. So, so <laughs> he did say I shouldn't start running until late Jan. Right. So, so, so it's, it's really encouraging, actually. So, what about you for Christmas Day? Uh, it's just uh, just the family to just, just us this year. So, just eating and opening presents and go to the beach. Is that it? Going to go to probably going to go a big hike on Christmas Eve. Uh, where are you going to go? We got Mount Arthur, which is where we, Tom and I went tramping, and it was so much snow we couldn't get to the top, so we oh. might go and do that. How long did that take you? Mm, four or five hours, maybe. How did your body find it? I suppose you're a bit used to it now. Yeah, no, you still get a good bit of quad, quad loading. Yeah, you know? no, that's good. Good. Yeah, do you want it? Because a lot of people, you like a lady I know, she did. Um, 
I can't remember which one she did, but she did like a guided, she, now she's 65 mm. and she did a guided walk where you do it like for three days and they kind of yeah. helicopter your stuff to places. It's very different if you're not carrying a pack. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> and, and she had like a day pack, but yeah. she did it eight hours and she just said it was like, it was almost, and she's a marathon runner, so she's yeah. a good runner, but she just did her body wasn't used to being on the feet that long. Yeah. And she said it was like the equivalent of a, like, like a hard half marathon. Just pass on a message just to toughen up. Okay, a bit, yeah, bit of concrete. Give me, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's good. And then New Year's? So how long are you there for? We get home on the third, I think. So, yeah. New Year's is never a big year with our family, really. We don't go ballistic. Oh, that's one thing I did. So we go to Glen Do, it's what we do mm-hmm. every year. And New Year's is always a bit of a letdown. Mm-hmm. And the reason is, is we don't have good music. Mm-hmm. And it's not that we don't have good music, but we only have Yui Booms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we get the Yui Boom. Yeah, and, speakers, yeah, and they're yeah. great. But if you're trying to dance, they're not loud mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. So when we go camping, we bought a new tent this year, mm-hmm. which we're very excited about. We've got a blackout room. Yeah, so that's about so, that. Yeah. So excited about that. And so I, and, and everyone who's, we, we haven't really contributed a lot to the campsite because mm-hmm. it's kind of all there. We put in for a marquee, but you know, everyone's got everything. So I said last year, this year I'm buying a party speaker. Right. So last weekend I bought a party speaker. Yeah. And we got home and then we've discovered you can plug the mics into it. Oh, no. So we're doing some karaoke on Friday night. Your uh, co-campers elsewhere are going to be yeah, thrilled. So, so this year, New Year's is going to rock because a the music's going to be pumping mm. and karaoke. And you know what people are like when they're drunk in karaoke. Mm. So oh, John, wait till you hear the stories in New Year's. <laughs> anyway, team, we hope you have a wonderful Christmas and New Year's with your loved ones and your families. Keep you training up if you're meant to be training or racing for something. Mm-hmm. Don't eat too much. Oh, don't say that. Okay, eat too much, but train <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah, yep. get back on track in January. Get back on track, and we'll see you. Go- oh, so what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks is we're going to what we thought we'd do this year is we'll, we're going to put some shows out, but we're going to do some interviews from like like in the first year or mm. first couple of years. So like because we've been doing this for like seventeen years now, so some really into early interviews from back in the day which will be entertaining for you over your holiday period. So we'll be back in the studios, I think about the 9th, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when we'll be back in the studios with our normal show. So let's wrap it up, John. I'm Russ. I'm Endo. Train hard. Train smart. Kia kaha. Kia kaha.